Hi, my name is Michael Thompson, and I am a product manager on the Dart team. Hi, my name is Darko Harkis, and I'm an engineer on the Dart native runtime team working on Dart FFI. Today, we're taking a look at Dart FFI. This is Dart's interop mechanism for calling C libraries. Daco, why is it actually called FFI? FFI stands for Foreign Function Interface, and it's a term used generally to describe interop mechanisms between programming languages. In Dart, FFI enables us to call a function from a C library directly from Dart code. What I love about FFI is the many options it gives us for expanding on what we can do in the Dart language. We can use it to call existing C libraries that are part of an operating system, for example, Win32 on Windows. You may have existing C source code from an existing project you can call. There are also many pre-compiled libraries with popular functionality, for example, the SQLite database. You might also have a part of your code that is especially performance critical and might benefit from some performance tuning, for example, performing manual memory management. Finally, you can even call code written in other programming languages, which support compiling to libraries that follow the C calling convention, for example, C++, Rust, and Go. All right, Daco, let's take a look at a concrete example. Here's a very simple uh, C math function for adding to integers. What do we need to do in order to call this function? To call a C function from Dart, we need to take three steps. First, we need to open the dynamic library containing the function. Then we need to look up the function in the library, and then we can call the function. So let me show you how that's done in code. So first, we open the dynamic library. And for that, we need the path to the dynamic library. And then we can look up the function. And for that, we need the name of the function, the C type, and the Dart type. Oh, I see. Uh, we need to specify both the C and Dart types, because the C and Dart type systems are quite different. Yeah, exactly. All right, now that we have that in place, we can call the function. And let's print the result. All right, that works. Great. To recap, we've seen how to call a C function called add from the Dart language. We went through three steps. One, open the library. Two, look up the function by providing its name and the two function signatures. And then three, we can actually call the function. That add function was some pretty simple C code. Can we try and take a look at something slightly more advanced? Uh, for example, what if we need to call a function that requires passing an argument, which is a pointer? All right, let's take a look at this char star argument string reversal function. And this char star is a pointer, and it's uh, pointing to a UTF-8 string on macOS. And for example, Windows, it could be pointing to a UTF-16 string. So let's go back to Dart. And let's first construct the argument. So here we have a Dart string. And then we import package FFI, which contains the UTF-8 type, which we can use to convert this Dart string into a UTF-8 pointer. All right, so now that we have the argument, we need to do the same steps as before. We need to open the dynamic library, which we have already done. And then we need to look up the function. And for that, we need the name and the C type and the Dart type. And then we can call the function. All right, let's print the result. Oh, we're printing a pointer. Yes, of course, we're reversing a C string. So now we're printing a pointer into C memory. So let's convert it back to a Dart string. That's better. Great. That seems simple enough. Is there anything else we need to do? Um, I vaguely recall from school that there is uh, something about being very careful with memory when you work with pointers. Oh, yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that, Michael. Yes. 
If you click on the native UTF-8 function, you can see that it uses an allocator. And this allocates C memory. And since C is not a managed language, the memory is not automatically freed. So let's go ahead and free it. All right, we have now shown how to call a C function from Dart, work with pointers, and manage C memory. With FFI, you can also interrupt with other C features. FFI supports structs, nested structs, and inline arrays. Struct can be passed by reference or by value. We also support callbacks from C back into Dart and attaching native finalizers to Dart objects. For more information about these, See our online documentation. Now that we have the basics of FFI covered, let's take a look at a more comprehensive and real-world example. Here is the Flutter sample app, Veggies in Season. This is a nice example of an app with a look and feel that you would typically find on Apple platforms. Here we're running it on macOS using Flutter's desktop support. While the app looks nice, it has a really limited selection of vegetables available in its database, and those vegetables are actually all hard-coded into the app. Let's see if we can make that more scalable. All right. How about using a database? Yeah, just what I had in mind. Uh, do you have an idea for a concrete database we could use? Maybe we could use SQLite. It has a full C API available, so we could use Dart FFI to bind to that. That's a great suggestion. I found the SQLite API documentation, and it looks like it has a really comprehensive set of C functions exposed. Uh, are we going to wrap each and every one of those functions manually, like we did in our previous example? Because uh, I mean, if so, this might end up being a really long video. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. So let's take a look at another tool we have for Dart FFI named FFI Gen. FFI Gen can automatically generate bindings from C header files. So here's a project I created earlier containing a configuration for FFI Gen. The configuration contains the path to the SQLite header file, and it contains the path of the Dart file that we want to generate. So let's go ahead and run FFI Gen. All right, looks like it ran successfully. Let's inspect the file. OK, so it generated bindings for all the C functions in the API. OK, we now have a Dart file with the full Dart API generated from the SQL database API headers. Um, I think this code, though, looks a little bit low level. Yeah, that's right. We could use this code directly. However, it's essentially a C API in Dart code. And if we're going to have a lot of Dart developers use this code, we should expose it as a cleaned up object-oriented API. For example, where our generated code has a SQLite 3 underscore prepare underscore v2 top level function, our object-oriented API could have a database class with a query method. And this is a general design step we see when wrapping C libraries in Dart. FFI gen gives you a C API in Dart code but we recommend that you put an idiomatic Dart API around it. I really like the idea of having an idiomatic Dart API for executing SQL statements. Having such an API will make the library much easier to use for Dart developers who may not know the C programming language. And Dr. I believe you've actually prepared such an API ahead of time. Yes, here's the idiomatic Dart API that we created. It has a database class and a query method. Oh, neat. Uh, could we use that to implement the search page in the Veggies app? Yes. Let's switch over to the Veggies app. So here I have the app running on the right and the editor on the left. And as you can see, the search is not working because we are returning an empty list from the search method. So let's go ahead and implement the search method. I've already prepared the SQL statement, so let's use the database API to execute that statement. All right, and the result is an iterable rows. So let's iterate over every row and return a veggie. And then the result needs to be a list. 
Okay, so now we have empty results. So let's add the name. Oh, I see. You're essentially mapping from the columns in the database rows uh, to the arguments we need to pass to the veggie constructor. Yeah, exactly. All right, here we go. Now it works. And if we inspect this, we can see that our implementation is using the object-oriented database API that we created. And this database API is using our generated bindings. Fantastic. I love how we can now search for any vegetable. And given we're using actual database queries with a real database, our app should be able to scale to much, much larger data sets. If you're interested in seeing the details of the utils and SQLite examples we did today, the code is available here. Please note that this code is not production ready and for demonstration purposes only. Got it. Yes, if you're an app developer, uh, there are several complete and ready-made packages supporting SQLite and other databases on the pub.dev package repository. So we recommend that you use one of those directly. We've now looked at two examples of using Dart FFI. First, we called some simple C utility functions. Next, we wrapped the SQLite C library with FFI gen and created a nice idiomatic Dart API with a database class exposing that. We then used that API to implement the search page in the veggies in season app. More generally, Dart FFI can be used to leverage any existing C code or library. It can even be used to interrupt with other programming languages that support compiling to libraries that follow the C calling convention. These include C++, Rust, and Go. You can use it directly from your app or from a package or plugin. You can even publish these to the pub.dev package repository. Dart FFI is supported on both the Dart and Flutter SDKs and works on all their native platforms, including the three major operating systems, Windows, Linux, and macOS, and on mobile, Android, and iOS. When using Dart FFI, there are three steps. First, you need to create the bindings for the C functions, either manually or automatically with FFI gen. Next, we recommend that you create an idiomatic Dart API. This is especially important if you're creating a reusable package intended for consumption by other Dart developers. And finally, you need to think about how to ship your C library with your Dart app or package. The details of this depend on the platform you're targeting, and you can read more about this in our online documentation at dart.dev forward slash go forward slash FFI. That is all we have for today. Have fun with Dart FFI.